good afternoon, distinguished guests, faculty, and graduates. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize for all my fellow graduates I stepped on trying to get up here. Um, but I would like to recognize, uh, of course, um, the university, the guests, the distinguished guests, faculty, and graduates. Thank you for bestowing this great honor of serving as your student speaker today. And I hope I can look to the standard of excellence that we've all come to enjoy from California Southern University. I'd like to begin by recognizing the president of California Southern University, Dr. Carol Ryan. The Dean of the School of Business, Dr. Gregory Herbert. The Dean of the School of Law, Dr. Um, I'm sorry, Ellen Sempong. The Dean of the School of Behavioral Sciences, Dr. Barbara Grimes. Chief Operations Officer, Dr. Carol Stanton. Chief Academic Officer, Dr. John Minchin. And our keynote speaker, Dr. Richard Nguyen. As well, I'd like to recognize the Chair of the Criminal Justice Area, Tommy Toussaint. I'd like to recognize the one person who, without his vision and dedication, we would not be standing here today. California State University founder, Dr. Donald Hecht. With that being said, we would not have enjoyed a first-class educational experience without the faculty mentors, as well as the rest of the team from Cal Southern. Personally, I know I would not be standing in front of you today without the help and support from Erica Woolman, Francis Simmons, Dr. Mike Ewald, Dr. Connie Fogel, Dr. Stephanie Hoon, and especially my academic advisor and soon be Dr. Amber Atiaga. Finally, I'd like to recognize all those who have supported us in the class of 2015. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the extraordinary support from my wife, Amber, as well as my two children, Trey and Alexis. Please join me in a round of applause honoring these academic leaders as well as those who support us throughout our journeys. Personally, I came from a family probably not very different than yours. My father's family came to this country from Hungary, Yugoslavia, and Germany 102 years ago. My mother's family were comprised of Germans, Irishmen, and Native Americans. And so I apologize that you do not have a thoroughbred for a speaker today. My father was the first in his family to attend college, working three jobs to earn a degree in math and physics from Michigan State University. He later pursued a master's degree from Central Michigan, uh, Central Michigan University as well. My, my parents instilled an immigrant working life discipline in each of the four children, who have now all attended college. Education was never a choice. It was assumed, very similar to the way that eating food is assumed. A common quote in our household was, live as if you die tomorrow, and learn as if you live forever. Learning was just a natural way in our life. We personify the old saying of, "Learning, uh, we must never stop learning as life never stops teaching. I remember driving 23 hours in a small car uh, and this is back before you can sit up in the back of the windows and your parents hit the brakes and you, you fall to the front. Um, and we drove 23 hours from Michigan down to Florida, stopping at various sites to learn about history and nature and playing the city state game. With that being said, I sometimes wonder why I pursued a degree in business versus psychology. My parents are still miraculously together after all those road trips and four highly energetic children, established a family goal of having each future generation having a better life than the previous one. This is where I discovered my passion for life, for learning, and for helping others. I spent my entire career in the financial services industry and the last dozen or so years in the not-for-profit sector known as credit unions. In our industry, we live by the idea that we should all leave everyone better than we found them. Also, we believe that progress is the constant replacing of the best there is with something still better. You can see why I'm at home in my profession and in love with what God has led me to do. At only 7% market share nationally, our industry is pretty much a David versus Goliath story, not too dissimilar from that of California Southern University. Often I hear that our industry cannot survive because the big banks are taking over. I love to hear that. I thrive. I thrive when people tell me I cannot do things. From early on in my life, I had many struggles. I had to attend speech therapy at recess while my friends were playing on the playground. At speech therapy, I had to learn how to say car instead of pal and drink instead of drink. In high school, the coaches often spent time with others uh, as they thought I wasn't worth their time. But today, I stand in front of you as an accomplished public speaker and a collegiate national champion in golf. As graduates today, we have all encountered someone telling us, no, we wouldn't finish, or question, why are you doing that? It may have been our own internal voices. Yes, sometimes during those all-nighters, long after a long day at work, putting the kids to bed, taking care of the house, paying bills, and then jumping online and do some coursework, 
There may have been some voices in our head. Maybe it was the wine. <laughs> we persevered. We displayed our resiliency and we proved that we are capable of anything. Often, it just took a little hug from our loved ones, a look of respect from our family, uh, or in my case, a phone call from Amber Artiaga, uh, plus a little, you're almost done, honey, for my best friend and wife. You should walk away today confident in your ability to accomplish anything through your passion and determination. I would like to conclude with a message from Thornton Mellon from the 1986 film, Back to School. To all you graduates as you go out into the world, my advice to you is, don't! It's rough out there. Move back with your parents. Let them worry about it. But in all seriousness, I would like to conclude with one of my favorites. To the world, you may just be one person, but to one person, you can be the world. We have enjoyed this from countless people during this journey that is concluding today. It is now our duty to pay it forward. We must become the encouragers of the pursuit of enlightenment, supporters for those who have chosen the endeavor of this tumultuous journey, and mentors so that others will avoid our pitfalls, and finally, we should help them reflect and celebrate their successes. Remember that when the student is ready, the master will appear. Today, you become masters, and remember the responsibility that comes along with the title. We are lucky to have attended such an extraordinary organization and I look forward to the outstanding achievements from this year's alumni. Thank you and congratulations, California Southern University's class of 2015.